Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. We are at the unit today. Because we're getting the ramps installed. Um, we think they're going to go here, just here. But obviously, we've got the um, roof supports, whatever you want to call them, there. We think we might just get away with having the ramp there. We'll see what the guy says. Otherwise, they're gonna have to be, as you come in the door there, but then it doesn't leave much space getting in the door. So we'll have to work that one out or maybe here. We'll see. But um, yeah, I'm glad of the unit today because it's very, very windy and it's due to get very, very wet. And uh, we all know how I feel when it starts getting wet so yeah and as if by magic the ramp is installed and we've installed it here so even when it is up in the air there is plenty of space still on there just got a uh, car in for failed MOT on brakes um, and headlight insecure so I've just been cracking on with that. Um, there was just a, a bracket down here that was broken, so bumper off. It's had a bit of a knock, you could see there. And obviously the grill and all around here. Um, and we put some new track rod ends on there. And then this one's ready to pick up. Feels nice to have a lift. Right guys, I have finished up the unit for the day. Um, yeah, didn't really film much of it, just had to get on and get stuff done. And there was um, quite a bit of noise being made. So, you know, um, as you could probably tell, when I first got there, <laughs> the wind was just blowing and the, um, the corrugated iron sheets on that um, unit just make one hell of a racket. So um, yeah, didn't film much there, um, but got that Vauxhall Corsa sorted. It need, needed front pads and discs, two track rod ends, and the indicator wasn't working, um, which I found the wiring just tied, um, tucked up behind the arch liner for some reason. I think well, it's obviously had a knock and fallen in there. So that was all good. Um, did just had a bit of a tidy up of the unit. Um, we've got a little Suzuki Swift. We put a clutch in it because um, that was totally gone when we bought it. We got it recovered home. Bit of a gamble, but it was cheap. It was 400 quid. So yeah, we took a gamble on it, put a clutch in it. Um, and so that's all good. It drives, it moves, um, but the speedo isn't working. Um, so we've got to have a look into that. Nathan bought a, I think it was a gearbox speed sensor um, something along them lines um, but it all looked the same apart from where it bolted down and the, in orientation of the plug it was just 90 degrees out all the pins were the same so I don't know if that's gonna make a difference it quite possibly does on my way to do a starter motor on a Tiguan I got a call for it today I haven't di diagnosed it but um, they want a starter motor put in. So I'm just gonna go pick up a starter motor now and fit that. So yeah, see you there. So we've just been called out to this uh, TIG one. The ROC have already diagnosed a faulty starter motor, which is just down there. And then I've just jacked it up to get underneath to some of these bolts. Need all the lights in the world. There we go, we've got a, another Lucas unit going on. Just got to check their like for like. Everything's the same. There we go. Teeth are slightly different on this one. I don't think that should cause a problem. There we go, that's the new starter motor installed. I've just got a do the bolts up, put the connections back on, and then we'll give it the big start and see if the ROC have diagnosed it correctly. Well, today, 
guys, my name's Kirby. We got ourselves the main man, Holland Ka Filter Tech. Caliper Tech now. Caliper Tech. How we going? So we've come out to this Honda FRV for rear pads. So I looked at this side, driver's rear. Actually looks quite good. Let's get some light in there. Looks fairly new to be honest. We're gonna come round to this side and it's gone metal to metal. So we're just stripping these back to see what's caused it. Is it a sticky caliper or is it just where pads and discs have been fitted previously but poorly um, and the pads are just sticking or something and nothing's creased up. So just having a look at that now. So the caliper, the piston is going back. I mean, it's quite tight. So we're just trying to um, work it. We put some silicone spray in there on, underneath the boot. Just seeing if we can save this customer's uh, caliper. What do you reckon, PK? I think, I think we've got it. What do you reckon? Oh, we'll see. We'll see, buddy. Right, as suspected, um, it's it's not really moving freely. Not as freely as I'd like, really, to be honest because that'll just cause issues in the future. So we'll pass up the new caliper. Right, so yes, we've advised the customer it needs a caliper and also discs. Um, normally, whenever I go to a, uh, a job that they just want pads, I normally bring discs with me as well um, because people don't really know they need discs. You know, there is a minimum thickness or um, they could be corroded or worn, warped. Um, so I'll always have that option with me. But on this case, it needed a caliper. And I gave him the price and he was, obviously it's more expensive. So he was uh, a bit unsure whether he wanted it done, maybe via me. Um, but I did take a 60 pound deposit to cover my time. Um, obviously I'll take that off if he decides to go ahead with uh, me because I'm, yeah, like I said, I've got to cover my time just because he didn't want, want any work doing right now doesn't mean I should lose out on a job or, you know, I could have done something else and got to earn some money. Anyway, we are now on our way to Mercedes Spinner Clutch. Um, I don't know if you can hear it on the video but it is raining and it's coming down pretty quick now. But luckily the clutch is all from underneath, so we should stay dry-ish. Um, so yeah, see you there. Right, now we're on to the Sprinter clutch. Got it all jacked up. Got James under here. How are you going? I'm doing the prop shaft. I'm just this, this end, so there's a, a support beam that goes under there. Got to take the gear linkage off. We've marked up which way the prop shaft goes. And then it'll just be a case of getting the uh, bell housing boxes out, uh, bolts out, hydraulic side should come a, should, should come down then. <laughs> um, all we've got to do now, so we've got the, all the sensors out, um, just got to get those bell housing bolts out, and uh, I think she's ready to come out. Right, so a little top tip when you're taking out bolts. If they're different lengths, get yourself a bit of cardboard, draw the shape that you're taking out. So pretty much round. And then we're gonna pop holes through the cardboard with the bolts, depending on where they are situated on the gearbox. See? They're laid out like that. That's the order James has taken them out. You can see the different lengths. 
bracket. And, and we set the bracket like that as well. So those bolts there. are there. So you know everything is going inside. back in the right. That's it. So gearbox is out, use the gearbox jack and then look at the play in this flywheel. Wow. And uh smell of vision, we ain't got it but she stinks. Stinky. Right, let's get them, uh, and you can see it's all the way adjusted as well. So we're just gonna whiz those off. There we go. Nice. The remains still look good, nice yep. and clean. Yeah, no Happy leaks, days. no leaks, that's good. Happy days. Let's clean up that crank sensor. Do that after. Yeah, nice. There we go, new clutch is installed. Line that up. Hopefully we've got that nice lined up. Right, so clutch is done on the sprinter, but unfortunately the gearbox is faulty. And then uh, James has just got to shoot off. <laughs> oh, look, it's still not starting. His, his jump pack's no good. He's wasted the last of the power on the sprinter. It's the earth. Go on. Oh no, you ain't going nowhere, mate. Go on. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Nah. Yeah, like I said, um, unfortunately, his gearbox was also um, no good. We put that clutch in, the flywheel was knackered, and the uh, worn clutch. Um, but initially, when I said to the guy, sorry, as I was saying, um, so when I first spoke to the customer, I asked him a few questions, just trying to figure out if it was the clutch or the gearbox or whatever. I asked him if it went into gear with the engine off and he said yes. Yeah, so um, with the engine on, um, he said the clutch pedal actually felt good, the pressure in it was good. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think he got recovered home. It was diagnosed as a clutch. Um, so when I got there, I did try it and I, it was a bit notchy going in and I said, oh, that doesn't feel good. Um, but you could obviously smell the clutch and whatever. So um, I said, I'd have a look at the gear linkage and everything, uh, which was fine. Um, so yeah. So yeah, this is the, the flywheel. It's got some movement there, which is sort of normal, but it's got quite a lot. But then also, that play there. Uh, so that was worn. And also you can't see it now because it's been in the rain and it's got all dirt on it, but it had loads of blue heat marks on it. Um, and then this is the, the friction plate. Um, not the end of the world, but uh, it is worn. Um, so yeah. But yes, unfortunately, um, we put it in and you was able to, which you wasn't be able to do before, um, is get it into gear and get it to move off. Um, so we know the clutch was bad, um, but I think what's happened is where the gearbox is faulty and it's probably been faulty for a little while because he did ask James sort of towards the end of the job, is there anything you can do with my gears? So, um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get a, a used box and we'll throw that in another day. Um, and I've just come to my fleet customer to do some MOT failures. It's now, what's the time? It's now five o'clock. I've called him. He normally leaves the key for me in a secret location and the, the key's not there. so. I've tried to ring him, I've texted him, I'll give him five, ten minutes and then I'm going home. I'll have to rearrange, don't know when I'll be back because 
super busy. Uh, maybe I'll just clean up my tools because I just threw them in my tray because I wanted to get here. Um, but yeah, so that'll be my, I think it's Tuesday, done. Might be Wednesday, I lose track of days, probably Tuesday. So yeah, we'll see you either doing this top mount, which I believe it is. Um, I've not looked at it. It's just uh, been worded on an MOT and this is kind of the only thing I think it can be. Or I'll see you tomorrow morning. So as you can see, my customer has turned up and on the MOT sheet, it says near side front, suspension arm or pin or pin or bush upper upper being the key word um, whatever the terminology was after that but so I've just come here had a look and you see this bush you can see the bush has come out of the metal sleeving and if I lever it up, see how that just moves up, zoom in, I'm going to check the plane and top mount as well just in case they've missed that lower arm, um, but yeah that in my mind shouldn't read um, suspension arm upper right so i'm not quite sure what this garage is seeing but if i rock this wheel side to side can you see the play in that bottom ball joint that's just unreal that's two separate things because on this, the wishbone is separate to the ball joint where a lot of them, I believe, come with the ball joint on a lot of cars. Um, so these are separate. And I don't know if I'm gonna get that completed this week. Um, we're just gonna, a uh, bit of rain. Um, just gonna test the uh, top mount, so lever underneath it, press it up and down, see if we've got any play there. I'm gonna get the van back down on the road, just back down on the road, on the floor. Turn it lock to lock, see if there's any knocking um, from there, but that feels fine to me, so. Yeah, we we'll have to come back another day. So, if you remember, this is the van that uh, had the glow, pli uh, glow plug light on, or he thought it was the engine management light. So, this is cold, just been sat here all day. If I can get the key in. So, coil light goes off, starts straight up. So there's definitely no, nothing wrong with the uh, glow plugs. Let's just turn that off. Normally you should hear knocking noises. There's nothing there. That's definitely no top mounts. Unfortunately, but uh, yeah, that's it for the day. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's now Wednesday, and we are back on a Tiguan. We went to last week um, for a uh, noisy suspension and shock absorber on the other side. Um, we forgot to do bring the service bits, so we just changed the oil. Nothing to see there, I've done that already. Um, so I'm just running through the computer. There's some faults in the engine. These have been there for quite a while, the EGR ones, that fuel pump one's new this is a long-term customer so i think they've those faults have been in there for a few years but uh yeah I, I can't see anything wrong with this um 
suspension this side, all the bushes are okay. Um, no, there's a little bit of play in one of the bushes, but really nothing, um, nothing major to be honest. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not really sure where to go with that one. Um, I have said, you know, it's sort of a process of elimination. Um, the next thing would be that uh, lower arm. Another orange S3. This time for a master cylinder. Just back there. So he's got a little aftermarket air intake system. That's got to come off. I'll take this little plate out of the way. Just give me more space. And then we can get in there. Now that's out of the way. Got that little heat shield. That's just wrapped around here. So what we've got to do now is take this pipe off, which runs up to the uh, reservoir. A bit of fluid will drop out of there. Undo this connection here. We've put a little um, brake caliper nipple uh, rubber on top of there. Once that comes out, otherwise fluid will come out. And then, um, depend on how easy it is to get the clips on, on the inside, we might take the whole pedal out might just be easier sometimes do that but this twists out okay after a bit of fiddling about trying to get this clip out so is that white clip there you just got to press both sides both sides in um and then um you should be able to take the master cylinder out that way but um yeah, I want to make sure I don't break the clip coming back in. So all I'm going to do, take off those two 13s up there. There's another one above it. Take this pipe out and then I can bring the whole assembly out. So there we go. A few minutes later, it's out. Um, yeah, just three bolts. It's a lot easier to get to, less messing about. Right, there we go. So you have to just smash up the little white clip. That goes in there. So this is the master cylinder. See that arm's all floppy. That goes in there, goes into that little gap. Then that goes into there and that keeps the arm in. So we've got two new white clips just in case the first one breaks. They're cheap enough. So we're going to Try and get this new one in. Look who's here on his day off. He's uh, taking a day off because he's earning too much money. Are you working? Nah. Yeah, I've got my boots on me. Oh, no. he's, he's put his boots on especially, <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially for this. We've got the apprentice with him. I'm just going to stick this new uh, master cylinder in. You've got the clip in place there. I'm going to get this into place if I've got it the right way around. Get it in some of the way, like that. Yeah, you're not doing that inside the car because the problem is this just snaps, snaps back. Oosh. I think we're in. Give that a twist. Plus. Nice. Nice. And pulls it back out. And we've managed to do it without breaking the white clip. So we've got a spare. There we go, it's all back in place. This little bar here just goes over the pedal. Bolts up there. It's all back in, all those are back in. Just gotta put this trim back in. I finished off that Audi. Uh, done the master cylinder um, and he wanted a CV joint doing as well uh, because someone had told him the boot would split but it's just a clip on the end uh, so we took the clips off refilled it with grease put the new clips on job done um, so the car drives um, but the pedal was still sticking. He's had a, well, I think the previous owner had a clutch kit, uprated clutch kit, flywheel done, and the slave cylinder at the same time. 
uh, I think about four years ago. I'm not sure on how much mileage it's done since, but um, yeah, so um, there was no leaks when I first checked it from underneath between the gearbox and the engine. I clamped off the pipe um, that goes to the slave cylinder and it was, um, yeah, it was still sticking or it was still going down to the floor. So that's why we went with a master cylinder rather than taking the box out to do the slave cylinder or potentially the release bearing. I think the release bearing might be sticking. So we've got to put that one back in and then we've just got to go and bit, do a bit of diag on a non-start golf. Apparently he was driving along, heard a loud pop and then it cut out or lost power. Um, he's got recovered home by the REC and he's got a few faults on that report to do with fuel pressure. So we're gonna go have a look at that now. Right, that's uh, Wednesday out of the way. Um, that last diagnosis job, um, again, customers there chatting, trying to diagnose a car. Not really ideal to film, but, um, so broke down on the motorway, I think. Um, heard a loud bang, lost power, then wouldn't restart. He's got towed to the services, I think. Um, the RAC bloke has gone over it. Fuel pressure faults. Hopefully he didn't delete any of the faults, but that was the only one that was left in there. Um, tried to spray a bit of brake cleaner up the intake. Didn't even want to know about starting. Um, so I think there's some sort of internal damage. Um, timing belt's fine. I'll check that. Um, I said I need to do a bit more investigation really so that's where we are for Wednesday first day tomorrow is chucking it down so I'm not going to do any mobile work I'm going to try and get a couple of jobs into the units uh, maybe go pick a car up or two so see you tomorrow so just back on this TIG one for the starter motor you can see that was the uh, earth lead the ROC mist We've got a nice shiny one. This is the right one. Go and stick that on. Right, so I don't know if I showed in a video a couple of days ago, I've done that start motor. REC diagnosed it as a start motor. Told, uh, I think they bump started it, got it home. Um, so customer just asked me to fit a start motor, which I did. Um, after putting it on, it wouldn't start. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. Uh, on that last job um, and then it didn't start and then uh, so done a couple of checks had power to the start motor and then um, must be a bad earth um, so I put the jump pack on to the positive on, on, the, on the battery put the negative onto the um, engine somewhere and it started up so um, yeah that's when I checked the earth lead and that had just um, corroded and it was just sitting <clears throat> together but snapped so I've just gone back fitted that quickly um, I've had another job for a brake light switch on a T5 it literally took me 30 seconds to pop it on and off um, customer again asked me to fit that um, checked it brake lights working and not staying on when they shouldn't that's all good. Um, just got to go and do a headlight uh, not working now. And apparently Halfords have changed the bulb and it's not the bulb. So we're going to go and have a look at that. Um, didn't fit two lower arms on a little um, Peugeot. So yeah, I was expecting a torrential downpour today. But it's actually quite dry. So on one, one hand, I sort of geared myself up to have quite a lazy day. <laughs> just pick this um, little Peugeot up and take it back to the unit um, but yes yeah, so um, got a bit on today let's get to it so I've come to pick up this little Peugeot 3008 with the self closing doors all right this time it closes but I've just uh, tried to close that three times stupid Peugeot <laughs> around on the floor well not totally because most of my days will be but it's 
nice to uh, get a car up in the air. So customer has requested we change these lower arms. Just see, get that in there, get that a wiggle. I tell you what, no one does a design quite like the French. So this bolt that holds that arm in, you can't get it out unless you raise the suspension up, otherwise the drive shaft sits over it. Um, and of course they put a really shallow Torx 50 in there. So that's very easy to round off. Luckily this one hasn't. And we're gonna try the same on this one back here. Um, we're struggling to get the ball joint completely out. I've got it loose. I've got the tool in there. Is it still in there? Yeah, this tool here. So it just spreads the hub. I've had the long bar on it, whacking it. So my theory is take these two out, swing it out, and then I might be able to get it down because the arm was just too far down. So maybe that was as far as it was gonna go. That's my theory anyway. There we go. One wishbone out. I just uh, removed the um, drive shaft bolt uh, nut and then smack that in. Give me a bit of play just to pull it out and then, yeah, just fill out. Piece of shoo. Right, that's one side done. What a pain in the ass just for a wishbone. French. Give me a VW any day. Right, let's get this one done. Didn't film the rest of that because it was just an absolute ball ache. I hate French cars. I'm pretty sure whoever designs them, he's the devil. There's no other reason for it. A couple of lower arms should be fairly easy. But with the crap design. Like the ball joints, why do they have to do them like that? Um, I don't know if it's the parts I bought, but this near side, the ball joint just, it would go in, but just not all the way up. Um, so messed around with that for ages. It's now dark. And I've still got to drop the car back, come back, tidy up my mess. Um, van's a mess, absolute mess. Today we got this Nissan Navara. It's got a broken rear coil spring, just at the top there. So we've got a um, upgraded kit. Nice shiny, beefy springs. So we're just in the process of getting everything off. Um, first, I've released this uh, anti-roll bar link. Uh, or anti-roll bar, I've taken the links off just through there. And then the next plan is I've got the jack under the diff just to support it. Then we're gonna take these bolts out here that hold the shock up. And then they've got some quite awkward bolts up here. I think they are just nuts at the top of the shock, if I can show you. Just at the top there. And I think it should slide out because there's no um, bolt this side. I'm assuming it's uh, just a captive thread or something on there. That's the Navara Springs finished. Can't see much, but uh, yeah, that's all done. Take a few days just to settle down. And that's me done for the week. Nice, easy end to the week. Yeah, as I was saying, that is the week all done. Um, again, 
if you've been, if you're enjoying this weekly series and you're not already please subscribe um, like I said just gives me the motivation to keep doing them um, or you guys let me know um, are these videos too long would you rather see not quite daily videos but uh, you know uh, more detailed videos of what I do because at the minute I know if I put too much detail into these videos they're gonna be like an hour maybe a bit more long so um, yeah let me know should I continue doing these weekly episodes or do you just want more regular shorter videos um, yeah let me know cheers for watching